Welcome back, everybody. And here we are once again joined by Bling and Patrice. Oh, I'm losing all my wording here. <laughs> it's the Nathanius, man. It threw you see, off. Nathanius threw me off, and yeah. now I am completely lost. So, Nathanius. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to mess worse. up all the wording. We're having a thing thrown, us, thrown to us a little bit slowly here, but do not worry. We're going to be ready for a great game between Terminator and Jirakji right now. And what are you guys thinking of this matchup? Because it's obviously Korean versus Korean, but it's going to be a tough one, I think, either way. And Jack G, we don't see massive results like we used to for him a long time ago. It's almost nearly a year ago since he's come up with anything like a huge win here. Um, obviously, you might be slightly biased here on the, the Jack G front. Yeah, teammates are teammates. You, know, <laughs> you get them everywhere. <laughs> uh... I don't know. Like, I don't actually like. I haven't seen Terminator enough to really know his play style. I mean, he's he's made a few splashes here and there in Korea. I'm pretty sure. Um, Jack G is obviously more the more known player, uh, and I'm pretty sure he he went quite far in GSL this time around. Not obviously too far, but he he went far because obviously well, he's just come back from Europe. Ninth to twelfth in Code S is. Pretty good yeah, either way. Yeah, obviously it's not round of such course, a stacked but... Korean. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, he made it pretty far in that, and I mean, coming back from from practicing and training in Europe, which is obviously a weaker region. Uh, so he's obviously still got pretty good skill to be able to you know transition back to that. Um, I feel like with the way PVT is at the minute, um, TVP, PVT, however you want to look at it, uh, I feel like. I don't want to be biased, but I feel like Terran does have... I think Terran's pretty comfortable. I know that a few Terran players, such as Bunny, I've, I've spoke to him a little bit about it, and he feels kind of the same, which is reassuring to me to know that. <laughs> uh, just that it's good, just it's good, it's good if the race is in your... It's like if someone who's on that race actually agrees that yeah. they are slightly It's good to know that I don't completely position. suck, so that's good. <laughs> it's, um, you're not doing anything wrong per se. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I feel like Taryn, Taryn are feeling pretty good. Obviously, there's a lot of different things that Protoss, Protoss have like in their arsenal. They've got a lot of difficult things that Terran have to deal with and take into consideration, even though that might not, you know, be the case in in certain games and certain maps. But um I feel like Jack G isn't too much of a crazy out there player, mm. which I feel will help him uh, against Protoss, not necessarily Terminator, but just against Protoss. So depending on how Terminator decides to play, um I'm gonna give the edge to Jack G. Not only because he plays Terran, but just because I think uh, he'll win. Okay. Well, Petraeus, I want to ask you some pretty in-depth questions here on Jack G. All right. He's got no WCS points at the moment. He hasn't been kind of putting up the results of what we've seen from last year. What's going on with this man? And obviously, this would be quite a big mm -hmm. tournament for him if he can pick up some points here. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, obviously, in the past, like, old times, like Wings of Liberty, he was very dominant. But... Um, not so much in Heart of the Swarm. And while I still think he's a very good player, like uh, just in the qualifier, he was playing from Korea to Europe mm. and he managed to qualify, um, beating some pretty good European names. Um, only one I can remember is Marine Lord. But um, yeah, that's pretty impressive in its own right. Uh, so I, I don't really know where his form is at right now, but he's certainly a player capable of, of showing, you know, a, a certain high level yeah, of definitely. play. Uh, so it's just a question of whether he brings that today. But I don't know, Term Terminator just seems like the stronger choice for me right now. Um, you know, he's been doing well in a lot of Korean tournaments and people who do that generally bring, you know, that to the foreign scene as well. It doesn't really work as it does the other way around. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not a PVT expert or anything. I can't really speak much about the matchup itself. But just on paper, the players, Terminator seems to be another clear favorite. Well, this group's really interesting to me. Obviously, we've got Hart, we've got Jack G, Terminator, J Dong. Now, J Dong! Yeah, see, see, there we go. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said. I'm sure there's a, a, a line of people waiting outside for J Dong, J Dong to sign autographs, take photos, and things like that. But. Player-wise at the moment, again, Jadong not really performing to what people would hope and expect. I'm 
I'm really going with Hart and Terminator for the, the two to come out of this group really topping it at the moment. And I think it's definitely going to come down to this game between uh, Terminator and Jack G right now. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on it. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to dislike you for that comment. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of people are actually going to dislike you for today, actually, in fact, Banks, because See, Targa, Targa first, first. Of all, right? That's and just now, you. That is just you. It's not just me at all. <laughs> I guarantee if you looked at the chat or if you looked at Reddit, you would have a hate thread just because of that comment about Targa. I think Bling is going to just initiate this hate thread. <laughs> Very respectful. I'm going to be like, who agrees with me? <laughs> just, just follow what Bling wants. Nah, trust me, the winter bots will be there. They'll be there. <laughs> oh, you can't throw that in there. The winter bots are in there. Anyway, yeah, I've noticed as well that I've kind of been, uh, with my uh, predictions and stuff, uh, I've been looking at it. I've actually been choosing the player that I don't think actually going to win, just the player that I think I like more. No, I was just thinking, I was like, I like Jack G, man. I was like, <laughs> yeah, because no, I've, I've, hung, I've hung out of him a little bit at Home Story Cup and he's one of the he's one of the more fun Koreans. Obviously, Koreans are quite shy and timid a bit. But... So all you're looking for really is a drinking buddy. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we've got the groups up now for Group D. Hart, Jack G, Terminator, Terminator and Jadong. Currently, obviously, Hart, he beat Jadong yesterday. We're going to see the game right now between Terminator and Jack G. I, I'm re I feel really confident with, with Hart and Terminator going through at this stage. Just, just from some of the research and stuff we've done on the players, what we know already. You know what would be the best situation, there. I think, for not only us... But for for the players as well, in my opinion, I, th I think that Hart and Jack G don't want to meet each other. They don't want to play TVT. I think that Analysis Desk also don't want to see a TVT because we'll be pretty stuck there. Um, so so you're trying to get rid of yeah. that so entirely. I think, I think the best outcome for the whole, of the, just the situation is that if Jack G actually loses to Terminator, even though I, I don't want him to, um, I don't want him to at all because I like Jack G. Uh, I guess that would be the best situation and then they don't have to play the mirror matchup. <laughs> no mirror ma matchups. That's all. You just don't want the TV no, to I just, at all. I just want it to be, I just want it to be uh, enjoyable for everyone involved and I feel like they won't enjoy it as us. We, we won't enjoy it either. So. <laughs> Straight up, no, oh, sure no, no TV, no TVT, all because Bling doesn't want it to happen. But no, I, I completely, I do agree with what you're saying. I know what you mean. We'd have to try bring the Muslim in quickly, stop him from casting, just bring him to sit down and nah, man, give he's us got some ZBC information. Now. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's, he's well, the ZBC king. <laughs> You, you best be careful because the Muslim might just come and take your Zerg knowledge and That's just sit, sit in your seat. Next, you never know. You could just go for all talented, like the Muslim, just does multi race across everything. The man with all knowledge. Yeah, the Muslim, Muslim's a cool guy. But there we yeah, go again. He's just going down there. <laughs> the Muslim's a cool guy. Man. Other than when he doesn't turn up to breakfast on time. Yeah. That was, Shouldn't have been yeah. drinking with Stefano last night. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's Stefano, a whole number. Stefano, Stefano just, ruins <laughs> careers for people. Well, yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to say that he ruined his own, but he he did like to party a lot and he liked to drink a lot and he didn't take it as seriously what he should have as he should have. So he, he might have ruined it, he might not have. But the fact that he's actually bringing the Muslim down with him, yeah, God. <laughs> downhill spiral. It was yeah. like. Yeah, we'll ag we'll agree for um, a, a, a time for breakfast. We all well, I roughly made the time, and Bling was there eating. Where's the Muslim? No Message idea. On Twitter, no. Oh, just just getting out of the shower. Just getting out of the shower. Half hour late. No breakfast with the Muslim this morning. That didn't happen. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually. Um, I didn't realise that Stefano was going to be here, and uh, when I because I didn't know that I was coming either, obviously. And then when I came here, um, I, I Snapchatted the Muslim. Because that's what we do. We Snapchat each other. We're cute. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to know what goes on these Snapchat pictures. No, which is fun. We're buddy. We're chums, man. We Snapchat. We're cool. We're hip. Uh, yes, yeah, so we we Snapchat and and then Stefano says is like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I'm like, <laughs> "I'm in the hotel." And then he, next thing I know, he's 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 in the hotel, and they're like, "Yeah, they're." I, I won't describe anymore, but they're drinking. 
Uh, PG stream. Yeah, PG's yeah, ma yeah, massively <laughs> drink, drinking. Uh, See, I'd say we could invite Stefano on, but for that no, reason of having not. a PG stream yeah. would be a dangerous situation to put ourselves yeah, in. Yeah, that's definitely not. <laughs> See, Blink's completely against it. Even though he, I think his his uh, apartment or whatever is only thirty minutes from here. It's that's very good. That's a good thing. <laughs> and he also <laughs> complained about prices of London, obviously studying over here now. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, he hates it. <laughs> He's like, won all that money in StarCraft, spending it in London for stuff that's you way know what, over as the well, top. I was speaking to him yesterday, and then he was like, he was like, I was like, I was like, so how do you like it? He's like, yeah, it's good, blah blah blah. Still, I was like, you still, you still playing a little bit like StarCraft? And he was like, mm. yeah, I actually uh, work behind the bar at the Meltdown Bar. I was like, what, you're a bartender? He was like, yeah. I was like. <laughs> How can you go from winning like IPL like hundreds of thousands to working behind the bar that you're actually like sponsored he, play, by, he yeah. plays for that team? <laughs> yeah, he's so he's sponsored by the bar and then he's also a part time yeah. bartender. So he's got magnificent hand See, skills I, for StarCraft and then pulling pints. I, I don't know if he actually like wants to do that, but it's just it's quite funny how it's gone from pretty much one extreme to the other. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He he's might, gone for the casual lifestyle. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> if anyone wants to go see Stefano pulling pints at a bar, head on down to Meltdown and you might just find yourself getting drinks given to you by Stefano. Yeah, give him a cheeky tip so he can stop yeah. complaining about... <laughs> so he doesn't have to do it. So he can stop complaining about London prices. Oh, dear. Well, <laughs> we, we even heard it from Parting. He wasn't happy of London prices. I think that's going to be a common theme. Is like, London is actually a lovely city. It's the arena here, and everything we've got is fantastic. But it's I think cool, the players man. are just going to be like, this is eating into my money. I'm just running then out. We should actually stop going on about that, because then it's actually going to discourage... Yeah, we're going to have, gonna have it's a gonna, it's gonna, Yeah, it's going to discourage people. To we actually want you to come. It's actually a really cool place, London. It's actually really fun. I actually, I actually love coming to London. Um... Except for the prices of it. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> kind of full circle. No, no. Whatever you say, we're going to end up back at the prices, yeah. No, no, I actually... The I prices actually love for the tickets aren't much, though. It's only £15. No. Pounds, so there you go. We can, we can plug that while we're here. Yeah. The tickets, they, don't, they only cost £15 pounds for a ticket. Get to have a full day of esports action. Can't complain about that. Can meet some of the guys. And meet some of your cool favourite players. It's a oh, cool yeah. venue. Really okay, cool. Okay, watching esports in a cinema with popcorn, drinks, food... What more can you want? Exactly. And with people that love it around you. That's the way to do it. Yeah, it's cool. Like, it's the first time that I think anything's... Like, oh, yeah, no, I've, I've, I know ESL have announced something about the cinema, blah. <laughs> announced. Yeah. Yeah. Announced. No, we're here. Nothing, yeah, we're nothing, here. Yeah, it's happening we're in the right night. now. Yeah. It's happening right now. We've got four, uh, yeah, four guaranteed events already in here. The arena's lovely. We've got two cinema rooms for it. So we've got the Challenger stage where the secondary game is going on, the main stage where all the, the action's happening. And it is fully kitted out. Well, what, what do you think, Patrice? You've been, we've been leaving you very quiet as we have British yeah, banter. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel very left out. But um, oh, oh, I, I can give you a hug. I, I wasn't around to, you know, with the Stefano stories. Oh, we, we see. We, but, now we uh, have to bring him in for no, breakfast. Right. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to bring him in. It's, all right. uh, it's probably for the best. Every my, time my Stefano's safety. at an event, he, there's always an, a story, isn't there? Oh, like, massively, yeah. no doubt. So, if if you feel missed out, don't worry. There'll be a right. story that you can tell yeah, after just, this event for sure. We we'll just bring him down for one day, and then something will happen. No, oh, no, I'm sure he'll be down. He he uh, he's he stayed in um, the Muslim's room last night, so he's still around here. All right, start off rumors. The Muslim and Stefano in a room together, staying in each other's room. The buds. I'm, I'm worried about this this buddy thing being said over and over again here. Hey, man, we're, we're buds, man. That's what we do. We like to spend time with each other. Just, just Even your if it's just sharing your a room, man. Just selling it for me right now. I'm starting <laughs> no, they, to worry. They stayed up drinking, which is why he was late. I don't want to get the Muslim into trouble because <laughs> he's, he's, he's meant to be a professional right casting. Yeah, he's he's, meant, yeah, he's so. hating us right now. Completely. We'll be hating on you, man. Everyone's hating on you today. I oh, just deal with the hate. I just take it. Hate comes my way. Smile and laugh it off. It's fine. But Petraeus. So back, we'll come back to the actual thoughts right. on the venue and everything. Obviously, this is very different to any other event you've, you've probably been to. It's very different to anything we've been to. But what are your overall thoughts of it? Um, no, I mean, I haven't really been to many events. I'm not the most experienced uh, programmer. But uh, it, it's definitely like a, a new milestone, I guess. Uh, it's definitely, if, if more events were in venues like this, I think it would be a lot better. Um, 
It's really becoming yeah. a spectator sport now, massively. Like, you look at just all the other events going on, people are filling out stadiums now, we're getting really good viewing numbers and everything like that from Twitch. It, it's going in a positive direction. You know what we forgot to mention? Mm. We have a Nando's, <laughs> literally. <laughs> we okay. have a Nando's, literally. It's right there. Yeah. yeah. And we, if you don't know what Nando's is, you need to come to London and, or... You know, yeah, I'm saying England Nando's. and experience, experience a Nando's because it, well, it's very good. The American teams that were here <laughs> last week. <laughs> <laughs> the American teams last week that were here... <laughs> Everyone in the background is now having a laugh about Nando's at us. The Every Amer British person can... Uh, oh, yeah, no, okay, we, we all Nando's. appreciate Nando's. It is, Even it is chicken. <laughs> it's just chicken, but it tastes really, really good. And we're not trying to oversell it at all. Come on. But most people who come here are like, we, got we need hater. to check out Nando's. We have to have a look at Nando's, and, and that's what happens. Did you have Nando's yesterday, Patrice? I did. Yay! Well, there you go. Thoughts? And today again, apparently. Um, that was all right. You I don't mean, sound too excited I mean, about that. It's always like, I mean, I'm okay, a okay, okay, so my, okay, yeah. again, Nando's. My options are You're limited. not selling the dream for Nando's here for us, Patres. Trying to get a sponsorship or something. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Bling's like honestly, sales repping it Honestly, up. if that could happen, <laughs> I would actually lose my... Uh -uh. Let's, that would be good. Let's, let's bring it back to the StarCraft. So... We, we've gone massively off tangent. We've gone. Yeah, no, man, that, we're talking about we're talking about exploring the horizons. It's in a cinema. Esports is in a cinema right now. Yes. It, that's that's happening. Then it's going to go down to Nando's. Then that it will happen. How are you? How are you planning this? Taking it from the it goes, it goes, to Nando's because it's going into it's exploring different things. So it's going to go down the food avenue. So we're going to be, like, going through McDonald's and... Have... No, because Nando's is healthy. Well, Dom, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Shopping with you and for food or anything like that is so annoying. You don't you don't live by the normal esports event lifestyle. Just get what food you want. Yeah, but I'm just... Fruit, chicken, all this focus, all this goodness. That's good, though. It's very good, very good. But what we're going to do now, we finally got the game ready for you guys. Slight delay, slight bit of talking about Nando's in the venue. We're going to go over to the casters and we're going to bring you Jack G taking on Terminator. Thank you guys. Uh, we are just about ready to get into the first game of our next series, Jock G versus Terminator. And I feel like I've learned so much about Bling and how, how, how painful Petraeus' face can look. I'm so glad we hired Bling, you know, just to fill in time. It's just like, yeah, I'm going to talk about the Muslim Stefano and like Nando's and yeah, freaking love Bling. But yeah, first of all, yeah, first time I got to cast with you today. That's lovely. Yeah. And uh, what a game it will be too. Jack G against Terminator. That's some, some nice Terran versus Protoss action. Us as Terran players will, of course, be completely unbiased in our evaluation of the games. Completely. And, yeah. I, I, if this series is half as crazy as the TVP that I got to see earlier between uh, Fantasy and Rain, then I'll, I'll be more than satisfied with this. I don't think he's going to play... I don't think Jack G ever plays quite as crazy as, as Fantasy does. But we're actually loaded in. We're ready to kick this one off. And... Well, I'm excited to do this to Muslim. We're going to start off on Expedition Lost, our first player spawning in the southwest position as the blue Protoss player representing Junior Green Wings. He is Terminator. And spawning over in the northeast side as our red Terran from my insanity, it is Jack G. Now, one interesting thing about this game is I haven't seen these guys in this matchup for quite some time. Like a long time ago, Jack G, as Petraeus said, he was the guy that was winning GSLs out of nowhere. Like he popped up on the scene, had clean, micro, beautiful mechanics and just did exceptionally well. Kind of fell off a little bit. Like it, I think his most recent result I remember being very good was his second place at DreamHack Moscow, mm. in which he lost to MMA in the final there. But um, yeah, I haven't seen him in quite some time in Terminator. He's been the guy in the scene that's been pulling out carriers and such against Zerg and doing exceptionally well. I think he beat Dark, actually, with carriers. So, yeah, looking forward to this. Yeah, it, it's cool that Terminator is one of those guys that we've, you know, I, you, you can kind of think a little bit further back about his name as far as, like, being someone that's been around, but now being on Jinnair Green Wings, being able to practice. And he's it, as good as he is. Like, he's not the person anybody talks about when they think about Jinnair Green Wings, right? You're like, okay, well, they've got Maru. 
Uh, well, you know? even if you think about their Protoss as alone, oh, yeah, it's Protoss, SOS. SOS. Trap even of recent has done very well. E1 and MLG back uh, back in the day. Yeah. So Terminator doesn't have a hell of a lot of show. Nice bit of keyboard cam going on here too on the cameras. Yeah. Mm, these guys, much faster than me, trying to play their games, man. That's actually a really good point, though, because you, you mentioned that, and then I think back, and like Protoss is like, well, Trap and Trap getting all the way to the, to the very end of... Uh, Katavici. Yeah. The yeah. Intel to Extreme Masters World Championships like pretty much just happened. So definitely somebody that gets overshadowed a lot. Expedition Lost, we can talk about this map a little bit, especially Jock G's opener. He's going for a Reaper. You know, this is a this is not the ideal map for scouting the main base with a Reaper, Muslim. No, Reapers only have one entrance into this main base. They cannot go through those back rocks or even jump up next to the back this rocks. This gateway's kind of blocking that path. Yeah, like you can't jump up anywhere here, but this gateway's kind of limiting the amount of area he even has. So he can only really go into one very specific spot at the top of that gateway with a Reaper, and that'll make it a lot easier for him to deny by keeping a Stalker and Mothership Core at the front of that ramp. Like, he really shouldn't be able to get a follow-up scout with that Reaper. Maybe he can use a check for proxies, but since there's a single gas opening from Terminator, it's unlikely that he's, you know, he's going to rush up to any type of fast tech that would need to be scouted. Only using one probe to deny this SUV, which he will do, but lets the Zealot pop out too, which ultimately also delays your Nexus by a little bit. So Jack G, upon seeing that Zealot, he must be like, oh, that's actually a nice little victory for me. That's 100 minerals that went into a Zealot rather than going into a faster Nexus. So already a nice little victory for Jack G there. While it doesn't put Terminator behind, those are 100 minerals that you didn't have to spend at this point in time. Yeah, Jachi is going to follow up with a second barracks after his reactor completes. And I do find Ooh. this a bit interesting. He, he banked up a pretty reasonable amount of gas. He's but... going for his engineering bay build, right? With two guys on gas? Oh, no, three racks it is. I was, I was going to say, like, I'm not entirely sure where this gas ends up going. I feel like he's going to be banking up gas for quite some time, actually, as uh, I would have expected him to move into a fast factory build, which had been pretty popular. We saw... Well, I guess if you guys tuned into the Challenger stream earlier this morning, like Fantasy pretty much stuck exclusively to that when he wasn't doing crazy builds on Secret Springs. Factory builds allow you to scout with the Widowmine drop and such. And if you can deal damage, you will deal damage. Go for a three racks opening like this. While the Protoss doesn't know necessarily what's happening, he still has to play a little timid. As you see here, the robotics facility, that's for getting observers out at potential Widowmines, but also just scouting your opponent to see what he's doing. Jaji's just playing very calm, very standard Game three racks. Four. A little bit yeah. of a pause here. Yeah, hopefully everything is all right. We can talk too much detail, of course. Is uh, he's not he's taking his earbuds out. Don't want to reveal everything. Yeah, it's be, That'd like, be bad. Oh my God, the Muslim he's proxy two stargates and there's carriers coming. It's like no, no, not really. no, no. And Jachi is one of the Koreans that does speak pretty good English too. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah, so you he'd know everything. You can't talk behind his back. No, the Muslim. Just zip it He'll up know. right now, Nathan. Joshy's a, you know, I'll, I'll just, I'll pull a blink. Joshy's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. I, I like him. I want him to win. Yeah, I've hung, I've hung out with Joshy. I haven't hung out with Terminator, so obviously I, I want Joshy to win for that reason alone. Mm, mm. I'm, uh, I am looking forward to see how this game goes, though. I'm a little surprised that Joshy opened up a Reaper on Expedition Lost. Yeah. I'm even surprised that he had two vetoes to use, and he let Expedition Lost stay in the pool. Given the fact that normally as a Terran, what do you veto? I'd say Secret Spring, maybe. Although you've seen like a couple of matchups go on that map. I don't like, some Terrans like Inferno pools against Protoss. I don't yeah. in particular. But yeah, I'm a little surprised that Expedition Lost got through, given that Reapers cannot scout at all. And that's a big deal when it comes into playing a Protoss. Maybe Jokchi went for like a, like a, a out of left field veto, because I have to imagine that Terminator is going to at least eliminate like maps like Catalina. Um, and even like as a Protoss, like that third Maybe base. Maybe Varney. Varney, you think? Like Terminator could veto Varney. Yeah. Just because the natural is so droppable. I guess we have to see because I don't know what the next two maps in this series are going to be. So maybe, but I, I'd be surprised. Like we start with Expedition Lost, and then it, I don't like. There's no way that this veto thing like panned out normally. So Terminator must have made like an unusual veto, or Jockji made like an unusual veto. Ah, Kathleen and Deadwing wow. are the next map. So quite the that, pool that's, there. That's actually pretty surprising. Deadwing opinion. against Protoss. That's hard. Yeah. With Expedition but, Lost against Protoss too. Like if you're a Protoss. He must have something planned for Catalina that he does not, not worried about playing against him on that map. Oh, we are back in the game here. So Stim starts very early for Jack G. No Comet Shield or Concussive Shell as of yet. So very, very standard 3 rex play. Very safe, very comfortable. Both playing a very safe and comfortable game here. So we'll be heading on to the 10-minute like, the mark before anything truly, really happens. And he's getting that second tech lab a little bit faster than usual on this barracks before he moves into a factory. Maybe oh. you think he's... 
considering going push? for like a, yeah, a big push with uh, one with his, with his combat shield and his stim without medivacs? He could also abuse the fact that he can damage the rocks at the back of the base with this sort of thing. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts getting combat shield very soon. And yes, it does start up here. So this, mm. it's no longer standard by Jack G. He's relying on one gas here. His factory will be insanely late. But with that, he wants to deal a lot of damage and really punish his opponent. Yeah, in, in, a, in a weird sort of way, it ends up not being that bad that he was banking some gas earlier on. Like, he wants to just mine off of one refinery so he can keep that mineral count high enough to keep building marauders. But he burns through his gas bank, getting those upgrades, getting these marauders out now. And this is, it can be a bit tricky since, as you mentioned, those back rocks are very vulnerable. His Reaper saw the robotic facility, so he knows that the really, the only like threatening unit he should be facing anytime soon is a Colossus. But if you manage to swing by or get past those rocks or pull the Protoss out of position in any way, you know, that one Colossus can be knocked down very quickly. I wonder what he's got his army at the top left postured there for. Like, was he hoping that a Stalker runs up and he, act, like, kind of accidentally runs into his army and he picks it off? Or is he just keeping his army out of position so this observer that he saw from the robotics only sees a portion of his army so he doesn't truly know what he's up against yet? Yeah, Could be multiple things. I mean, I mean, both of them are reasonable choices. The first Colossus is on the way now. But what's interesting to note is that, you know, how does Terminator react to his observer not seeing a factory or a starport? He could have gone closer to the right side of his base. He's like, maybe it's tucked over there, but, you know, it's kind of out there at that point. Has he has he realized this? Because he's starting two forges right now. Yeah, two forges blink on the way, too. I like the fact that Terminator actually killed these rocks earlier, yeah, the army too. is split up and for he sees Jack the whole army. So Terminator, how's he going to react to this? Warping in sentries of force fields. He can buy time with two force fields here, but... Yeah, just killing these rocks has actually already bought Terminator a lot of time. His first Colossus will be done by the time this bio pushes him. He has, of course, enough sentry energy to just force field him away. Like, if he tries to stem up this ramp, he's just going to get cut in half. And one force field, so not... Ooh. Oh, and that's exactly what happens. He Takes does pick sentry, off though. one of the sentries. Actually, the sentry that had another enough energy for another force field. But, but I, I don't think you charge up this. How much of his army did he stim, by the way? Is his whole army? He only stimmed a few Marines. Oh, that was a nice stim by Jachi then. Not really expending too much health there on his whole army. A lot of players would have made the mistake there. But two extra barracks on the way now. So he's going to up to five barracks with his starport here. So a truly aggressive build by Jachi. This does it have any longevity to it. Not really. There's no third CC yet, which, yeah, on Expedition lost. It's a tough map to play, but given the fact that he's opening up the back entrance too to his opponent, yeah, he just wants to deal damage. Yeah, there's only uh, one force field. Oh, he actually just runs straight wow. up. He doesn't have enough. He didn't have enough energy for a force field, so he's just able to just snipe the Colossus. He's moving forward. Time warps these Marauders. Oh it barely picks it off, and well, we can see those back rocks. He uh, got his army was so clumped up that the Colossus was just standing on top of the gateway units and was much easier to target. In fact, did he did he even get Colossus range? I'm not sure. No. No, no cloth oh. range yet. But the, the fact that he didn't plant a force field there, he really wasn't expecting yeah, that, as much as it was. I think that, that, uh, the sentry, it looked like on the health bar, it had enough uh, energy to plant one force field, but I guess he was just barely shy of it. Or if, if he had enough energy for a force field and he didn't use it, then obviously it's a massive mistake. And that was definitely the opening that Jack G was hoping for. Like, if that did not happen, Terminator would have had a huge lead. His plus one, plus one is almost done. Whereas Jack G, he's only got plus one on the way. He's getting Blink, he's getting Thermal Lance now. But losing two Colossi, that is a huge, huge, huge loss at this point. And this uh, tough spot to be put in. Like, the starport is still late enough that, like, a big Viking push can't really come anytime soon. He wants to get some medevacs out first. He's getting that plus one attack. But Terminator, he will be set up with his two, with his 1-1. One, one. He's just now starting his Colossus range, though, and I think he's realizing, like, this is a pretty big deal. He doesn't want to get that 2-2 two, two going first, because I think that would open the opportunity for Jock to just kill him before those upgrades even finish. So Terminator sees that third base is being constructed right now, and he also sees there is an army outside his base. Let's see how he reacts to this. Oh, it's like, well, <laughs> I don't think that move is going to work twice. The range still isn't done, so he can pick off any straggling units at the end, but he has enough energy for, I think he should have two force fields available on this century, or close to that. Okay, yeah, 100 energy. He can drop two force fields, which ideally closes off either one of the ramps that Jock G could try to push up, and he scans and actually misses, I think, both observers. General rule of thumb, if you see the Terran 
has his third in construction, you need to get your third up pretty soon. Probably at the latest by the time the third is actually completed. So right now, Terminator doesn't have to worry too much, but where is he going to take his third? Because his natural's exposed, his main's exposed, and Jachi, he's doing a very good job of just having Marauders constantly on the map. Ooh! Oh. That was nice. He actually focused the Stalker further away because yeah. he knew he could get both of them there. I'm, I'm, I'm more impressed that like he was able to do that Whoa. when the blink cooldown was almost over. Jachi loads up a massive drop for Medivac, speeding towards the east side, and this could should this should be able to deny this third base since the army is still postured between the main and the natural expansion. And while at the same time, he still has a lot of forces out in front of that natural. Jachi's army is huge on both fronts here, and these Colossi, they're kind of going to no man's land here. But as we see on the minimap, upon seeing Jachi's army on the left side, in fact, what does he have in his main? Does he have enough to hold off Jachi's army? There One is Colossus, a decent no, no force fields, but the Zealot should act as a blockade <gasps> since range is done. Oh, look at this. He sees the army in the middle, and this leaves Terminator's third exposed. So Jachi taking full advantage of being able to know where his opponent is. Yeah, really important cancel on that base. Uh, these little mines. Oh, the observer's not with the army. Ooh, Ooh well, he's still, oh. still the take some paint damage on those zealots. That's quite a lot of damage. I think Jachi actually refocused with that, would have mined that. Yeah, detonating it at the stalker wouldn't have done anything for him as it blinked away. But this army, like, there's still just that one sentry that makes me so nervous. Like, if he doesn't plant those force fields, he won't have many opportunities to uh, recover from that. And he's oh. just going to go for a full surround on this army. The Marines and Marauders on the right side are going to get cleaned up, but I think he actually targeted down the sentry as there's no force fields whatsoever, and his Marauders just stim forward and cleaning up close to every Colossus, one barely alive in the back, but not enough to actually kill off these bio forces. Oh, man. Jachi cleans up Terminator at the third base here, but Terminator coming in with a new army that was waiting at his main, and just his defending his two, main. His plus two upgrades are finishing. He's got that plus two armor, so these Zealots are much more difficult to deal with, of course. Ooh. The Widow Mine's actually really helping him, though. If he can clean up these Zealots, those Stalkers will die incredibly fast to the Marauders. Third does fall, and yet again here, though, for Terminator. And all this time, Jachi's been on three base economy. He's getting pretty decent upgrades. He's getting a second starport now. Man, Terminator's time is running out here. Yeah, this is a really tricky position to be in for, for Terminator. Jachi's thrown away a lot of units, but with the income that he has, he's still in a solid spot. The only thing that makes me worry is, you know, the upgrades. But he's moving into his plus two. He's getting plus one for his Vikings. And I do like these Widow Mines trying to just section off where the reinforcements go to stop this. No anti-air to defend against this Colossi here. Oh, yeah, all this, none of the Stalkers are in the main base. And he's wow. going to lose another Colossus. These are losses that you can't be having. Like, how many Colossi are actually on the field now? Is it just one or two? Oh, he's going to kill this one Observer. On the so field. The, the mines are still a factor in the main base of Terminator. At the same time, he's pushing to get that third base. Oh, picks off another Colossi. Colossus, loads up, and boosts out, saving most of the forces that he brought over there. Terminator is just, he's just bullying. Ter he's, I mean, he's just getting bullied right now. Jachi is bullying Terminator with a truly aggressive build. And right from the get-go, sniping off those two Colossi early on, that really allowed Jachi to get into this game because Terminator, until that point, was holding off pretty darn well. He was saving and conserving his energy. But right now, Jachi, if he keeps that Colossi count low, he doesn't have to worry at all about damage being done, despite being in against superior upgrades, because that's the only real damage in yeah. Terminator's like, army. Upgraded gateway forces, like, unless you're fighting with 3-3 three, three versus 0-0, zero, zero, you know, Stim Bio will still give you a run for your money, but... Certainly. And this... With this amount of uh, Vikings, too, like good six to eight Vikings on the field against a single Colossi, that Colossi is going to drop immediately. Yeah, so Terminator basically just held back now, finally cleaning up some of the Widow Mines that were in his main base. But still tricky. He's going to start up a Dark Shrine, as I, I'm sure he's realized by now that he's in a very precarious position as a... Uh, Jachi coming down towards this valley underneath the base. There's no Colossi here. He's just fighting gateway units. He's going to land Ooh. his Vikings a bit bold since there are Colossi on the left side, but some Marauders are going to peel off to try to snipe that. He's not able to get it just yet. Another Colossus comes in from the right side, so Terminator is actually able to get Whoa. a decent concave against Jachi's army. Sick micro by Terminator. And Jachi really overcommitted with those Vikings there, landing them upon seeing no Colossi. Then all of a sudden, a Colossi flank. It's like, it's like Jachi, you're ahead. You're not that far ahead. He's, he, he doesn't like not have any tech units whatsoever. And But for the first time in this game, they're relatively close in supply now, and Terminator has a... Well, he has 2-2 two, two against 2-1 two, right now, so a decent upgrade lead, but, man, losing all those Vikings, they don't get made quickly. And now Jachi, is he just going to give up his third here? I, I think he might have to. He's going to bring some more forces. That bunker is nice against the Stalkers. Doesn't look like Terminator wants to commit to this yet. I don't think he has a pylon very close by, so if he pushes in and gets, gets you know, loses his Zealots or Stalkers, the Colossi will be forfeit. So he should try to wait and try to get some sort of reinforcement point up or at least have the Mothership Core there to recall out. He's going to take a fourth base. I think this is the smart move for Terminator if he's ahead of base on against Terran. 
that uh, makes life very, very difficult for Jockchi moving forward in this game. Ooh, Jockchi smells blood, though, and he is hunting down Terminator Sami. Can he really get away with... Ooh, very aggressive blinks here. Losing yeah, the stalker in the process. Maybe two. Two stalkers for that uh, Viking, and maybe a third now. That blink cooldown, I don't know if it's ready oh, yet. Oh, man. There's still a lot of Colossi on the map, though. Jockchi's building three Vikings at a time, now going up to four. DTs, I see blue moving into the base oh, here, boy. so DTs will be dealing damage now. Oh, there are no missile turrets. Oh, goodness. He does have scans, but this is still... This is a lot of damage he's going to take. He was close in workers, which usually gives you the econ advantage when you have mules, but now... Now he's just tasting pain. A lot of pain, and yes, SCVs. Eight SCVs down right now to one single DT, so definitely worth the investment there. Now, plus just... three armor on the way, four Terminator, plus three attack, four Jachi. Jachi's getting a nice number of Vikings out. He did have the Ghost Academy on the field too, and just kind of sharking around the map with his squad now. On both sides, actually. So Terminator really has to spread himself perfectly here to defend on both fronts. And it's going to be very tricky, but he's, he's building up that, that powerful Protoss army that can usually just win head-to-head -head engagements against Bio. Like he, there's, he just needs to make sure that he gets into a good position, He's still playing with like very few force fields in this army, but now with the amount of Colossi, just running up and trying to snipe them is going to be very tricky with the bio. Just needs to keep these, the rest of his forces together. Keep these charged zealots in front of buffer. And they're actually, the zealots are not with this army yet. So the Vikings and Marauders push forward. There's nothing to actually soak up damage for this army for Terminator. Oh man, this is a lot of Vikings dealing a lot of damage and all the Colossi fall, just one single Colossi left. But that's a good fleet of say 10 or so Vikings. So that falls yeah. almost immediately. That and now- That Colossus gets wrecked. And now the zealots show up, but there's nothing to actually kill the Marines and Marauders. The Vikings are going to land. He's pushing in as a single Dark Templar mixed in with this army. The Guardian Shield wears off, and I think this is where Jockchi is just oh. going to take this first map. Terminator has nothing to stop this. Scans kills everything, even the probes being pulled, but to Muslim, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be enough, Nathanius. And 158 supply against 71. Terminator being cut thin here. Jackie just marching in, just wipes out the whole army, and GG is called. Jackie takes a nifty game one victory. Uh, it's uh, really, you know, it's hard to overstate like just how uh, important having those zealots with the colossi were like taking that fight like yeah the colossi can deal lots of damage but the zealots are supposed to get in the way of running up and targeting them down with the marines and marauders which is exactly what joxy did he had barely any stalkers he had uh, like to deal damage with the vikings he had no archons to deal that damage on the splash vikings um no storms available because he went for dt tech instead of that but one of the big things that joxy did there perfectly as he sharked around the map he killed every observer terminator was totally in the dark there he didn't know where Jachi was coming and didn't know what with. So when Jachi finally made his push there with his whole army grouped up, half Terminator's squad was in his main base. So totally out of position there. And that was really a game winning move by Jachi, just keep it or rendering your opponent blind. Yeah, it, be, be without the observers and with so many different attack points open for Jachi to run into his base, be, be it the natural opening where he pushed in a few times, the back rocks where he did a tremendous amount of damage in that first map or just the two, three different directions you can attack the third base from, he had to spread himself too thin. It's, it's, not, like, it's not like Terminator was doing something silly. He just wasn't sure where Jockchi was. He didn't know when the attack was going to come and where it would come from. Certainly. So really nice play by Jockchi. Like, he, he committed to a very aggressive build there, too, with a three yeah. racks, two tech lab build. Like, most Terran players go for three racks, one tech lab, then you forego add-ons for the time being. You get your factory, your engineering bay, then you add on add-ons. What Jachi committed to there was dealing early damage, and Terminator, he allowed him to do it by running up that back ramp. So Jachi took advantage of the map, the back rocks, the back entrance, and he did it ever so well. And Terminator, man, suffered a, suffered a harsh defeat there. Yeah, so that was uh, definitely, I, I have to agree, like those openings are very risky for Terran players to go for. Like, you open up with three racks like that, and we imagine a world where one force field gets planted in the middle of that army, and he doesn't run up and snipe two Colossi. Could be a different game entirely. Yeah, it's it's an entirely, like, that's when we're basically like, oh my goodness, like, how is Joxy supposed to come back into this game? He just threw away, like, 30 supply of bio for maybe a zealot he would have been able to kill, but, like, missing the force field, but also, like, there was, mm, he, he targeted down the sentry that had an extra force field when he made the first push up the ramp into the natural expansion. Mm -hmm. So I think that's maybe why the sentry barely didn't have enough energy, because he definitely saved one extra force field, but... That was the one that was targeted down when he forced one of those like five Marines in, in the early, in the, like the very, very first uh, trade. And if we remember very early on, in the very first trade at the bottom of the ramp of the natural, where he did section off the army and six Marines got left behind, they actually did snipe one of the sentries. Yeah. So maybe in Terminator's ideal world where it's like, okay, I've done this thousands of times in practice. I have enough energy. And then it's like, <gasps> wait, I don't. Ah, oh, damn that one, like, 
sentry that died earlier on to those marines he really cost with, me the game. He played with very few sentries that game. And like you don't it's not like you need a lot of sentries versus Terran. No, but, but early on if you're against yeah. the triple racks, very having aggressive a, play. Having a couple, especially when there's no medevacs, that's when like that's when sentries are actually really, really good against Terran if they play with anything that's not drop based. Certainly, certainly. And on a map like Expedition Lost where and it he didn't have anything out on the map very early. Like, did he even probe scout? I don't think he did that game. So we didn't know if, whether it was going to be like Widowmine drop or Rax yeah. play. He had no idea. Yeah, that's a really good point. And moving forward, it's not going to get any easier for him as uh, the next map in this best of three, I believe we said it was going to be Catalina and the third map. If Deadwing. It, if it, oh, it's going to be Deadwing before oh, Catalina? Catalina and Deadwing yeah, are the those maps. Are, those are the other two. So if, if it's Catalina's second map, then I'm kind of worried for Terminator because that's like, that's like Terran Heaven. And Jachi is not one of those guys that goes for the barracks openings every single game. I, I would kind of expect to see him pull out some sort of mind drop on a map like that where it's just so good. Like, why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you? I mean, even on Expedition Lost, to be honest, I love the mind drops. I think the mind drops are one of the biggest, biggest like, heartaches for Protoss players in this matchup. I know when playing against Bling, he uh, absolutely hates playing against them. They are very, very difficult to handle that as there's so much airspace on this map, but we are now loaded into game number two in the bottom right position with the most airspace behind his mineral line. Representing my insanity, he is Jokji. And spawning over in the left of Catalina, our red Protoss, it is Jin as Terminator. So the first game, Jokji went for that very aggressive three racks opening. What happens very early on in TVP? Well, Protosses generally like to go for a 12 or 13 game and play a macrocentric opening. Yes, they can deviate by making a second gas and going for some very, very all in type of build. But the Terran, he's the one that usually dictates the pace of the game, whether it's CC first, a Reaper opening, with a follow-up of a barracks or a factory. It's uh, truly, we have to wait for the Terran to make his move to see what he's, what's going to happen this game, really. I was, I was so, I was like just waiting, watching him build that depot. I'm like, it's right next to the refinery. Go gas first. But you can only hope, Nathan. Yeah. Well, you know me. You know me, the Muslim. Some people like mind drops. I like mind drops so much. I just, I don't even expand before I do them. So, I was, I was, I was almost, almost ready to be made a believer by Jockchi. He's gonna okay. do the more smart opening, I think. Reaper is really good on this map. I mean, it might work on NA. Maybe not in Gfinity. What? Just saying, Nathan. No, just saying. I, I've harvested many European tiers. <laughs> with my mind drops. Don't worry, Demuslim. Over in bronze. Anyhow, <laughs> so that gas does finish up, so we will resume mining and just have a decent... Like, this is a very, very standard opening from both these players. An early scout from Jack G. This will be searching for where his opponent is, and if he does scout him initially, then he can also go for a Nexus block with his SCV, like he did in the first game, actually, where he forced out a Zealot. Yeah. Which is just a unit that you don't want to be making at that point in time. It's not going to do anything for you unless you're one of those cheesy Protoss is like to do fast Zealot Stalker Mothership Core Rush in those which case those guys are nasty yeah those are just, that's actually just pure evil especially if they uh, like on, on maps like this it can be kind of weird but he didn't build any buildings at his wall so like there's nothing really to pick off if that were coming in this hypothetical world where that's actually happening but the SCV doesn't immediately find his base so the Reaper can go to the other direction but this also means he should be able to plant the Nexus down without much trouble and well that's, that's already something that's better for him compared to the last map it's breathing room for Terminator. There's nothing kind of distracting him early on. He didn't need to finish off that Zealot, so he can just immediately go into the Mothership Core and Stalker combo as soon as he can afford it. In fact, at this point in time, given that he hasn't scouted yet and there's been no Reaper or SCV in his base, he could probably assume that he might be up against a CC first until this Reaper comes and pops him. Yeah, he does have the Mothership Core finishing up soon, so with the way that he's placed his gateway, it shouldn't be too easy for the Reaper to run around the base. However, like... Yeah, even even as fast as it is, it's usually pretty easy to stop him from dealing much damage once the Mothership Core is out. Joxy, this game, though, the factory follow-up. This is what we were talking about earlier. This is, from what I've been seeing, like the most popular way to open against Protoss these days for Terran, and in my opinion, it's a great way to open. I like it a lot. You get to deal damage, but you also get to scout your opponent. Like, primarily, obviously, you make the Widow Mines and the Medivacs to deal damage, but when you get to see your opponent, you're in there. If your Reaper doesn't get that valuable information that he needs, i.e. seeing the tech, be it a Twilight Council or a Robotics or a Stargate, all your Medivac and Mines can do that job too. And this probe is finally going to make its way over, but I think the... Is that the Reaper just at the base of the ramp, basically just waiting for him? Yeah, so this waiting probe... Waiting for that probe. So 
So he's going to kill the probe, and yeah, okay, you'll see Marines too, but like, of course, Jokju is going to build Marines. What he doesn't know, and what is a real problem in this game, Whoa. is where he's headed with this. And it looks like Jokju is going to go for one of these maybe big Hellion runbys while he drops Marines at the same time, or he could drop the Hellions and run the Marines in. There's there's a couple different ways that Jokju can actually play this. It's already a little uh, a little bit weird from Jokju, as most Terrans leave the reactor on the barracks, or the barracks on the reactor rather, and just pump out Marines. It's much safer to do that. But upon seeing that this robotics facility is going down, Jaji's gonna be feeling pretty comfortable about that. With a robotics, what's the worst thing that could happen to you potentially? An immortal all-in, which by Terminator's build and his layout and the way that he does usually play, it's a very safe, solid style. So Jaji probably won't be worrying about that and just wants to deal damage with this Hellion drop now and doesn't have to worry about his own base. Yeah, and this is the potential to do a lot of damage as sometimes, you know, depending on how far he wants to go with this, because it could just be that Hellion drop. He's still building another Hellion, though. That's a lot of Hellions. Well, I, I think the Hellions are going to try to do the run by and he's going to drop the Marines. Oh, he's kind of supply blocked here, so his Hellion count isn't going to be as high as that's he wanted awkward. it very quickly. So that's a little bit of a blunder there for Jack G, but we'll see what he does with this medevac. Oh, loads up the Marines. So it yeah. looks like it will be a medevac drop possibly on the main while the Hellions run into the natural, but we'll see. We'll see, Nathanius. Uh, sometimes it happens that when you start to target fire, even in the face of photon overcharge probes, they run away, and that's when these Hellions become very strong. Now, the three Stalkers are up front, so it's ideal for him to wait for the drop to hit so that he can force the Stalkers to react, but he sees another Hellion crossing the map, so he should he should start to uh, realize that this could be a problem. He's actually moving his Stalkers in a way that's kind of creating a mini wall. This, yeah, it really is a stock wall. He does see where this drop is now. Potion overcharge on the main. Ooh, oh, now... the Hellions slip by. He's got two probe kills already. The, actually, pulling the probes really delayed how much the Hellions were able to get a position on this force, oh, but that extra oh. one that runs in, he can still get the... Oh, Some nine kills. dreamy hits here. Ten probes down for roughly five Hellions. That's a trade as a Terran that I'd take any day of the week. This yeah. drop is still active. Kills, kills the, the Observer pylon. as well. Yeah, he killed the Pylon at the end of the base. He killed that Observer. And like these Stalkers are going to come down, try to pick off this Medivac. Actually, that's a really nice grab. Oh, wow. But he still trades as a Stalker. Yeah, Stalker down for a Medivac. It's a trade that any Protoss would like to take. And these Marines, they fall along too. Oh, oh he's, he's going to get another, another Stalker. stalker. This, oh, oh, last oh, Marine, Jimmy Marine. Rambo. He did it. Okay, so what's being produced here for Jack G? Lots and lots of barracks. This is the right move. What does he have to worry about again? As a Terran, when you do any sort of aggressive play, you always have to think, okay, what's the next step? What do I have to worry about potentially? And here, he's getting enough barracks out so we can get enough units to stop a possible Blink Stalker attack. But as we see in the production tab, double forge, Colossi being produced. Terminator's just resorting to his tried and true that yeah. he did in the first game. He, he's, yeah, exactly. He's headed towards where he was set up on map number one. Um, key differences, I'm guessing? Well, he's going to start the 1-1 one -one before he gets Thermal Lance again. So... Stim is going to be ready in time that maybe some follow-up drop harass could still be a pretty big pain for Terminator to deal with. That awkward moment when you creep past a Hellion with a probe and you actually get to live to tell the tale. But anyhow, let's have a look at this production tab. So Stim, reasonably early actually, despite all the aggression. Four barracks, three with tech lab. So looks like Jack G will just be again, just trying to apply pressure, pressure, pressure. In fact, the fifth barracks, wow, okay. So, so that makes more sense. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Like, this is like hidden that barracks on the side. But he has a, I think he postured that Hellion at the one of the potential third bases of Terminator. So he knows, he knows Terminator's still on two bases. And, you know, this is a two base map for Protoss for the most part. Like, it's very difficult to hold on to that third against an aggressive Terran, especially Jokchi now threatening with Widowmines and a Medivac. Um, if you can get that third, though, as Protoss here, I mean, you know, it's a pretty big, pretty big deal. Jokchi has a decent supply lead right now. Like, he's ahead in workers, he's ahead in army. He's only just started as plus one, so that really signifies how heavy he's playing on getting out an army. Oh Whoa. my god, the probes aren't reacting. He drops the two mines in the middle line. Oh, oh seven kills. They both kind of landed on the same spot there, but still, still seven Widowmine still kills. Still worth for him. Man. Oh, man. That could have been... I, he could have actually cleaned out the whole mineral line. They, as, as much as that sucked for Terminator, he should actually be, like, counting his blessings because it could have been so much worse. Could have been far worse in here. A four Marauder drop? I have not seen this in a while. And where does he choose to go? Maybe in the back of the natural? I think he realizes his opponent's on the back foot here. Is Terminator just going to take a hidden base? I think so. He's like, I'm never getting a third, not with the way this game's panned out. So I just got to turtle up, take a hidden nexus, and pray for the best. And Jachi's really committed to this two base kind of style here. Is there a third on the way anywhere? Doesn't look like it, but by the supply, he's just powering on ahead here. 110 against 84 of his opponent. Uh, he's even getting some turrets up in his in his mineral lines. I think this, uh, at least in the natural mineral line, I really like this because we kind of saw the DT desperation play in the last game. Pick him up a little bit, but 
you know, it didn't win in the game. However, Jockshi just doesn't want to, doesn't really want to think about that possibility. Certainly not. Now he replaces that old heli in there with a marine, moves out to play kind of aggressive here. And does he see, oh, Jack G is definitely one of those guys that spots observers like no man can. Still has that Marauder drop postured in the top left of the map. So that's ready to drop and deal damage. The main's always exposed here too. Look at the vision of Terminator. He can't actually see if Jack G loads up into his main here as that's all in fog. So Terminator's very, very exposed. Yeah, it's very nerve-wracking as a Protoss player because his Thermal Lance is finishing up. So, like, for the whole period of time, right before this moment, like, if he had taken a straight-up fight, those Colossi are very easy to target since they have the same range as a Marauder without the range upgrade. But Jockji knows that Terminator is still just sitting here on two bases. And for Terminator, playing two base versus a two base Terran, it's not, like, the worst thing ever because he's getting his upgrades together. Like, he still has a chance to explode out when his upgrade's complete as Jockji's only just now getting his plus one armor. But Terminator, he wants to get that third. It's <laughs> He's going to hide it. He is going to hide it, certainly. And here, a big drop. So Jackie keeps killing those observers. There are quite a few lying around. So Terminator does get to spot this. So moves on into his main here with a group of stalkers to deflect those drops. A nice hidden expo in the top right. The observer has seen when the third was going down and such. And now the supply, 153 against 100. How does Terminator plan on getting back into this game? Well, he has to wait for Jack G to make a mistake and then capitalize with having an upgrade lead because it will eventually be 2-2 against just 1-0, which is enough for a Protoss to get back into the game. Yeah, especially with, uh, you know, once he starts to get that blink finished and he can move into charge, like charge zealots with 2-2, like you can write off a lot of things that Terran might throw at you, like uh, SCV pulls, for example, especially since I do not... I do not believe there's an armory. He starts at Ghost Academy, but Jockchi, he's going into four Viking production. He had no armory, so he will not be moving past plus one upgrades for quite some time. Now, this Marauder drop going there to just... In fact, this could be like a distraction drop, as we see that his main army is by Terminator's possible fourth here. While this isn't an army you want to engage with, as it doesn't have medevacs, doesn't have the sustainability, he's just sharking around. He's making Terminator's life very, very uncomfortable. Jackchi constantly scanning his opponent, seeing, and now... Now he's smelling something. Now he's walking around the map, he's like, checking for pylons or like, bases. You, you are too comfortable with just sitting on two bases. Like, you know that you can't win this game if you play two base versus three base for this one. He blinks down, actually manages to pick off a good number of the Vikings in this bio force, forced to stim after taking some damage. The drops but are happening though, Nathanius, both at the main and the natural here. Marauders drop at the natural, but the main drop, this is huge here. Yeah, he's got a ton of bio and just stimming very heavily. The Colossi are going to come back to try to fight against this, but there's still that drop in the natural expansion, picking away at some forces. He's going to try to trade out. Wow, I thought he was going to trade out for the Stalkers, but he manages to barely escape. That was pretty smooth. However, this also distracts Jokshi from taking care of a ninja base. Certainly. Like, even though he did get the drop and did a little bit of damage there and keeps his supply lead, in Jokshi's head, it's kind of like, okay, this buys me time in which I'm just getting further and further ahead. And here, upon putting up this third, this could really throw Jokshi off here. Yeah, because if Jokshi denies this, he might get a little bit overconfident, especially since... Terminator is close to having his charge ready. He's going for plus three armor, and he's going to be facing against 1-1. One, one. This is this is slowly turning into a situation where Jokshi could throw this game. Slowly. I mean, he's, he's got 185 supply yeah. to work with, which isn't an amount that you can take lightly here. Even with Terminator having an upgrade lead, the fact is... Jackie's still yeah. got a way bigger army. Look how much blue is marching out across the field right now, Nathanius, with ghosts as well and SEVs. Okay, the SEVs, going for it. Storm is not ready yet. Plus three is not ready yet. And, you know, I, I think the Terminator's done mostly everything that he needs to do to try to be in a good position this game. But, you know, as you said, Jockchi has just been ahead for so long. He's way ahead in supply. And he's going to move the ghost forward, EMP the sentry, so oh. he cannot block him from moving up this ramp. He got pretty much all those sentries there. So while there's no M EMPs on high Templars and stuff, there's no high Templars with Storm available. So this was a really good move. Jackchi just wants to kill his opponent now. Yeah, he's moving in, and the rest of the Colossi are going to be targeted down by Whoa. the Vikings. Well, he just stems straight forward into all of this, showing no fear. He's got such a massive army, he cannot be stopped. All of the Colossi dropping to the these Vikings, the Archon, not enough to stave off the SCVs, and GG is called. Jachi takes the 2-0 over Terminator. Wow, what a decisive victory for Jachi there. I, like, at the start of the series, I was worried for him. Like, he hasn't been looking truly tip-top in a long time, and Terminator, he just seems to be on the rise, and PVT, I've seen Jachi do well in Europe. I know he's always good against players such as Mana and stuff, but against the true titans of Protoss players. Yeah. Like, if you put Jachi up against, like, the Reigns of the world or the SOSs, he tends to fall a little 
a little, a little early, but here, he definitely displayed to us that he can play multiple styles and do it extremely, extremely well. He's very aggressive. Yeah, very well played against, you know, the Kespa Protoss yeah. uh, Terminator with, with all the practice environment that that guy has, you'd imagine that it's like, he's, it's one of those scary players that you have to go up against because you know that they have a potential to put a lot of preparation as far as like when the groups were announced ahead of time yeah. for these guys to start to study their opponents. But a nice, nice victory for Chokchi. Yeah. Nice victory for, for my team. Sure, Petraeus is up there. Happy. Happy, happy as Larry, because, yeah, he even banked on a Terminator winning that game and that series. Uh -huh. So the fact that Jackie did it so decisively 2-0, I love how Jackie just decided, hey, I'm going to play five racks and just play aggressive. Because he kind of, and he did it so well. He really contained his opponent, denied vision constantly, just left his opponent in a state of worry the whole time because he couldn't see anything. He couldn't see where he was going to get attacked from. And even half the time when he didn't attack, he had drops ready. You saw yeah. what Jack G's game plan was the whole time. The way Jack G set himself up, like there was really no way that Terminator could get away with cutting any corners. No, certainly not. Yeah, but uh, it seems like the analysis boys are ready. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this series. Let's hear what they have to say. Thank you, guys, and welcome back to the analyst room, I'll call it, rather than a desk. We got what we wanted from Jack G, something we haven't seen in quite a long time. That was uh, like watching the old Jack G for sure. Very good, convincing win there. And, well, you guys, what were your, your thoughts on that? Because... Obviously, it was TVP. Paul, you, you're completely like, Terran, really? Yep. No, I, I know what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I paid a lot of attention to that uh, what, series. What were the predictions again? Well, I, I was, mean, that's I was not really Terminator. A, that, that's and not really important, is it? I mean, uh, Who said Jack G? Uh, oh, look at it. Look at, he's, just, oh, yeah. he's taking all the credit <laughs> again. It's like, my predictions are right all the time. No, it was, um, it was a cool game, a uh, cool series to see. Uh... Game one, especially because it was it was a lot different. It was a lot different from what we usually see in PVT these game uh, these days. Rather, uh, obviously, it was a standard Reaper opening, but um, the follow up was com not not the usual follow up that you'd see, especially on that map. It's kind of an unusual map to do that, seeing as the natural is kind of so. It's not as wide as ramp as uh, other maps, for instance. But uh, yeah, it was cool to see, and the fact that. Uh, Terminator actually scouted the Jack G was going for three racks. Yeah. Uh, it actually allowed him to do a completely different build, which isn't common at all in the PVT matchup, which used to be really, really common, and that's the really fast Colossus. And yeah, that was cool to see, and I, uh, it, it was looking really good for him, to be honest, like the fact that he had such fast Colossus and he was going up against slow Medivacs and that he defended the first push. Um, but he just, when he got his sentries picked off, when he had his sentries picked off, I guess he just didn't anticipate the, the follow-up kind of stimming YOLO attack uh, through the back rocks, and he didn't have a sentry to force field the ramp, and it kind of went downhill from there, because as we saw, even though it's kind of close, like, Jack G kept taking kind of bad engagements throughout the, the map, um, he kept killing off Colossus, which was the main thing, because he actually stopped uh, Terminator from being able to produce observers, which... Uh, I guess, negated his map vision. And then that was how Jack G kind of maneuvered around the map and got him out of position in, in that final uh, attack on map number one. Um, so, yeah, that was, I guess, cool to see a different type of uh, game played out. But it's a bit of a shame that it worked out that way because even though, obviously, I wanted Jack G to win, I predicted him to win. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it was a bit of a shame that Terminator <laughs> just failed a bit on uh, his execution and... Uh, yeah, it's just that, really. <laughs> we, you know, we're going to have to start keeping tallies of who's making the right predictions here. I mean, because... I wish we'd done that earlier. Yeah, we should like... have started that from <laughs> yeah. the beginning because... <laughs> hey, hey, doesn't matter. <laughs> just made it, so... We, we just don't forget that he voted for um, Targa at one point and yes. then voted for... Yeah, I don't even think I predicted Targa to win. I just said I wanted don't, him don't to. Don't try and retract your <laughs> Targa will win everything. My name is Blink and I am right... <laughs> He still will. Well, uh, is, <laughs> there's a losers losers bracket. Oh yeah, <laughs> what the one you just made up for Targa's own benefit. Uh, Targa's got it, man. <laughs> Targa's got it. <laughs> we, we need to bring him back in here so you two can have a little conversation about why he's so great. Should have interviewed him, man. <laughs> but, but yeah, map, map number two as well. Like that's the usual for that map, especially. That's all, all you're going to see. Those kind of gas builds. Uh, Reactor helium, maybe not so much, but you do see that. It's kind of common these days. Uh, but if you lose, 
10 probes then, and then seven to the follow-up with a mine attack. Like, it's going to be pretty hard to kind of come back from that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Sometimes you defend it perfectly, sometimes you don't. I guess the Hellions probably caught him off a little, a little bit off guard. Uh, but, yeah, it's just one of those things. And if it, goes, if it goes well, it goes really well. And if it goes wrong, it goes really wrong. And it went really wrong. <laughs> Which is, yeah, I guess it was kind of over then-ish. Obviously, it got dragged out a little bit longer. He tried to get back in with the hidden expansion, which is actually a really cool move. Um, but it didn't seem like it crossed Jack G's mind that that was actually... Because usually, like, a Terran player kind of gets a feel for it. Like, mm, why, haven't, why yeah. haven't they took them? Something's missing Why here. haven't they took their third yet? Or maybe they've got a hidden. But the fact that Jack G probably felt so far ahead, like, from all that initial yeah. damage, he was probably like, I probably can't even afford a third anyway, so... It's like, yeah. it doesn't matter. I'm just going to steamroll <laughs> yeah. it anyway. And he did that, so, yeah, pretty straightforward, I guess. Got to be pretty happy with a, a teammate coming across of a 2 -0 like that. Yes. I, I, I you want to say yes. You predicted against your teammate. I know, exactly. <laughs> oh, my like, God. You... <laughs> <laughs> Predictions no are different way. than just sharing. Just clicked with right, there. It was like, that. traitor. Yeah. And loyalty, man. <laughs> what? I have no loyalty. But, um, no, it's good to see him go through. Um, I like Jack G. I spent, like, four days with him when I first came to the NY house. Maybe spoke three words. So, <laughs> you know. We, we, we get along the, well. We get along well. We've got the groups up now on the screen, and well, you can see Hart and Jack G with the wins there. J Dong and Terminator with the losses. It's gonna. I think this is gonna pan out to be a really interesting group now. What are your thoughts on who actually might end up advancing, guys? I mean, after that series, I definitely favour um, Jack G to come out on top. I, I've, I honestly just think that was like, see, if he can continue that form, yeah. that's like, yeah. that's like, not. I'm not going to go out there and say winning form, but it's like going back to the Jack G we used to know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, we didn't want this, did we? No one wanted no, this. We'll, no one wanted the TBT. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, I think what would probably be best... For... <laughs> All right, okay, so... I think if, if Jack G wins against Hart, then I think definitely Jack G and Hart will go through. I don't think Hart's going to lose to... He's already beat J Dong 2-0. I don't think he'll lose to Terminator. Um, I think if Hart beats Jack G, though, and then Jack G will have to play uh, Terminator or J Dong, then I think that will probably be harder to decide for me. I feel like... If Terminator meets Jack G again, if, if Terminator beats J Dong, that is. Uh, if Terminator does meet Jack G again, then I feel like he'll probably play a much better series. I don't think he'll make as much mistakes as he did. I think uh, that that was his first game of the, the tournament, so maybe he might just need to settle in a little bit. Um, yeah, a bit of warm-up time. Get used to his surroundings, yeah. Uh, so I think that, yeah, it would be all up in the air depending on who wins uh, the TVT series. Well... So what's interesting to know from this group as well is Jack G, despite obviously being a face that we're all familiar with, he's the youngest in this group. He's only 21. He's only 21. Oh, he's yeah. Yeah. That's still quite old, though, because yeah, I was expecting you to like say, 18 like... I was like, 18 or something. Yeah, was like, no, no, how no. old is he? But oh, okay. he's, he's the youngest in the group through this as well, so he's got a lot, he's got a lot of playing well, how time still in him. Hmm? How old's Parting? Parting's not in this group. Oh, I thought you meant the tournament. No, sorry. no, no, I'm saying the group. No, not oh, the right. tournament, not the tournament. I'm oh, not going out. I don't know everyone. Oh, I'm not even sure then. Oh, I, could, I couldn't care. All right, fair one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going, with, going with some just an interesting fact there because he's right. someone that's done pretty well. Young kind of guns, dropped, man. We literally haven't seen anything of him really much this year. Like, pretty much been non-existent. Come back, he's at this tournament, done very well. So far, gets the first win off there and qualified through the EU qualifier, which isn't no easy task anyway. Across server as well, a lot of lag. Yeah, yeah. But shame on him from stealing Manus. Uh, oh, they actually, oh. Manus didn't. No, Marine Lord, sorry. Marine Lord, I feel sorry for him, man. He, he came so close, both qualifiers, like lost 3 2 or 2 3. Both qualifiers. It's just the way it goes. Yeah. If people are willing to play uh, across the realms and play with a bit of high latency, then... Yeah, no, it's, it is impressive, like, with that lag. and Most players but, would just be like, no, can't yeah, do it, not and, uh, and with with a, a race like Terran, for sure, the, in my opinion, the most micro-intensive race, like, mm. that's pretty good to do that cross server, man. That's good going. So, yeah, props to him. Obviously, he's showing it now to... 2-0 against Terminator. So we'll just have to see the TVT series that we're all very anticipated <laughs> for, yeah. that we're looking forward to. 
Oh, I'm just looking forward to what you two are going to bring on the TVT side of things. I'm going to ask you questions, man. We're going to, sw- <laughs> we're going to switch seats. <laughs> I'm just going to be like, I don't really have any uh, pro level. Ho- hopefully, we can get we can get uh, Nathanius or Nathanius, as you call him, um, in the seat or the Muslim to give us a bit of extra insight. Yeah, definitely so. <laughs> well, looking at Jay Dong's hopes right now, obviously a big fan favourite. He's got to come off and rebound with this. But in, yeah. in a group of such strong players, I'm kind of worried for him right now. Yeah, I'm not sure he'll be able to do it. Um, it's He's such an like, up and down player. Yeah, this past series seemed like a really good series for Jokji. But the series uh, with Jade on it, which mm. was also 2 0 for Hart, um, that kind of just seemed like Jay Dong was just falling apart, you know. Like, obviously, Hart played very well. Yeah. Uh, props to him. But, um, yeah, Jay Dong just really wasn't looking well in that series. So, if he can pull it together, like, if that's possible, then perhaps. But, yeah, I'm really not feeling confident, which sucks if that's possible, as a Zerg player. It's a long road to climb. What? Come on. It is Jay Dong, man. Come on. <laughs> Jay Dong. Well, right. we're going to go for a quick break. Do not go anywhere. There'll be more StarCraft action coming very soon, live from the G-Finity Arena. 